What is going on IPBL fans? My name is Frosty aka the Alpha Like and Rock and today I'm bringing you our week 4 matchup for the IPBL against Little Bigness and his uh, Seattle Scissors. Now uh, Seattle's team is pretty good and looking at it, there we go. Uh, looking at it, he has a very good team. Actually, his first couple picks are really, really good. Uh, so his team consists of Mew, Clefable, Swallow, Marowak, Alolan Form, Kamala, Kabalion, Magnazone, Starmie, Weezing, Regirock, sorry, Regirock, and Breedling. So his Z users, I believe if I remember correctly, are Mew, I think it's Mew and Kabalion. I could be wrong. I don't remember who, I don't remember who his, uh, who he said his uh his users were maybe it was Matt. maybe it was uh maybe it was, maybe it was starmy i don't remember i know mew was one of them so i have to definitely play uh play out for that so um so uh as it is let's uh, let's get into the team as we built it uh as always we're being cheered on by our shiny rock rock alpha uh so and the first member of our team is going to be our guzrilla our tight our our titar this is full speed timid natured full attack four special defense choice banded tyranitar so i wanted to be able to catch things off guard especially uh uh possibly scarf you know uh, you know possibly uh even Magnusone, so I should be able to KO this thing with Earthquake as Choice Band just hits everything extremely hard. Uh, it is rocking Pursuit, Stone Edge, Super Power, and uh, what is it? Pursuit, Stone Edge, Super Power, and Earthquake. So this is going to hit everything extremely hard. Uh, we're also setting up Sandstream, and since we brought Sandstream, let's introduce the next member who also goes with it, and that is going to be our War Greymon, our Excadrill. Uh, this is Choice Scarf Sand Force Escadrille. Uh, it has just enough speed to outspeed everything on his team with a Scarf. Uh, it is uh, full attack nature. Why does it not have... Why does it not have 250? Wow, okay, it didn't have 252. It had 244 for some reason. But whatever. Did it Did it have that? I don't know. I guess, I guess not. So, whatever. Um, so, it's got... Uh, it's got full. It's uh, it's got full attack, and 160, 160 something in the HPs to get us up to 206. So uh, this is gonna be rocking earthquake, rock slide, rapid spin, and uh, iron head. Three moves that are definitely boosted by that sand force in the sand. So uh, that is gonna be very good for us. Uh, with that, we're bringing our next mom, which is gonna be our Whitney. This is our uh, again a physically defensive Whitney with stealth rock, melt trank, hill bell, and earthquake. This is thick fat. So uh, I should have made this sap zipper. I don't know why I didn't, but I did. It is what it is. But uh, Earthquake, this is just because Earthquake is everything extremely hard. If I get the Swallow, then I get the Swallow. There's nothing I can do about that. So, um, so with Swallow, I'm not sure if it's going to be physical or defensive. So with that, we're going to be bringing in case it's not, uh, in case it's not physical. Uh, we have another answer for that. Uh, next, we're going to be bringing our Needle Queen. This is going to be Toxic Spikes. Needle Queen again with Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, and Earth Power. Uh, Toxic Spikes, one, if they get up, they're going to be doing well. This is going to be rocking up Habaya Berry, which is for Psychic. That way, I could 1v1 Mew with this thing very easily as Shadow Ball does clean 50%. So if I weaken it down with T-Tar, then I can easily secure the kill with Nami here. So Nami can easily secure the kill as Sludge Wave also does huge chunks of damage and so does Earth Power. Earth Power one-shots most things on his team. Uh, Sludge Wave just does lots of it uh timid nature with um it is a timid timid nature with uh 176 speed 252 attack eight in the special defense and 76 in the hp it says to give me just a little bit of bulk so uh it's it's got just enough speed out speed something something speed invested i think it was full speed invested magna zone but I could be wrong on that. I don't remember. Uh, but it is going to hit extremely hard with the special attacks. Uh, I thought about making it physical, but I just didn't see a reason to make it physical. Uh, plus, his walls for our physical Needle Queen are pretty... What was it? What, what was the reason I did... Oh, it was Weezing. That's why. Uh, because Weezing, like, doesn't take Shadow Ball very well, but it would eat up, like, anything else. So, uh, plus he had plus he had Kabalion, and Kabalion could possibly live one. So it could live in Earthquake, but it does not live in Earth Power. So, uh, on top of that, so with that, uh, we're gonna be going into the next member of the team, which is our Narissa, which we're bringing again with Wish, Scold, Yawn, and Protect. Uh, yawn is just one of those moves. Like if he tries to set up, I can yawn him, and then it forces a switch, or he's going to sleep. 
So with that, that's what I definitely uh, brought you on for this time. Uh, so I know I, I know I have toxic spikes too, so I need to be careful not to try to do that, not to try to get toxic spikes on top of yawn and all of that so uh yawn might be useless but wish and protect and scold are not they're always good mods and then lastly we are bringing uh alex Strasa. this is life orb uh life orb timid nature alex Strasa with psy shock and with shadow ball roost roost in default what oh yeah no 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 that's right that's right uh no no, no. it's supposed to be roost it was supposed to be recover but he gave it roost so i'm gonna have to talk to my jenner because this is I've had some issues with some of these because my Jenner originally when he gave me work Raymond it was sand rush and not sand force so I'm gonna have to definitely talk to my Jenner about this because that, that's just yeah come on roost it's supposed to be recover well whatever it's six to one when I have it as the other do the same damn thing but uh so this is my defogger just in case he gets uh he wants to get taught he wants to get hazard stacking on his team because he does have a lot of hazard uh mons on his team I believe he has like five or like five, was it five mods that it can hazard stack me with? Uh, no, he has five stealth rock centers. Um, uh, Marowak, Regirock, Mew, Kabaliana, and Clefable. Then he has Weezing that has toxic spikes. But he also has four hazard removals, which is very good. So he has Mew, Swallow, Starmie, and Kamala. So it's all very, very iffy. So uh, the one... No, he's got, oh, I see. No, he has, only has two heal bellers, which is me and Clefable. So if I don't see that Clefable, I'm going to be happy. Plus, also, I brought uh, plus physical Needle Queen doesn't do too horribly much. Uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't unwall uh, it Clefable like it just rips through Clefable. So uh, with that, that is the team. So as we see, we brought Alex Strasa, Narissa, Nami, Whitney, Wargreymon, and Guzrilla. So now let's go into the match and let us see how we did against Little Bigness. All right, guys, we're back, and as you can see, uh, we have our match here with Bigness. Uh, he brought a brought a very interesting team, a lot more than I thought he was going to bring. I originally originally thought he was going to bring that Clefable, but he didn't. Uh, as you can see, he brought Magnus on Kamala, Mew, uh, Weezing, Breloom, and Kabalion. Right now, sticking off on the top of my head, that Kabalion is definitely scary, and so is that Magnezone. As Magnus, like Specs, Analytic Magnezone could put in some work. Mew is also scary because I have no idea what set it is. Uh, Breloom. I'm unfortunate certain what Brindlum could do to my team, uh, but I could probably, I'm, I am feeling I can handle it, but right now the biggest threat is definitely Kabalion and Mew. Those two are the biggest threats to my team, but uh, let's get into it. As I see it, I, my immediate reaction is to start off with Sand, so I'm gonna immediately open with Guzrilla, uh, as I felt that was the best opening to open with, as I could catch something off guard, especially if he brings Mew. I could definitely catch that Mew off guard and uh, possibly even Oko it on the first chance, especially if he has like Scarf Mew with U-Turn, I can easily Oko it with, uh, with this, but he actually surprised me and ends up leading with Magnezone. Now here, I definitely take the chance, as I am rocking the Earthquake, Earthquake should KO it. It will KO this, so I decide I'm gonna show him that I'm a lot faster than he is and I hit the Earthquake. Uh, here, uh, he is not actually analytic, he is sturdy. I really thought he was going to be analytic because he's fat because he's slower, but he actually reveals to be sturdy. He said he made it change at the last minute, so he's going to get the flash cannon. Flash cannon is a chance to kill, uh, and it almost does. So as it is, we trade up the one for one. Here he knows he is. Uh, here he knows he could die. So I'm expecting him to switch out. As I decide, I'm going to switch into Nami. That way, uh, Nami can easily eat this, plus it doesn't take any sand damage. I don't have to worry about that. And he actually switches out, and he decides to go to Detroit. He's wheezing. This is definitely a matchup I could definitely get behind, as I'm not definitely worried about that. This is another reason why I didn't want to bring physical uh, physical Nami, because I know this thing likes to carry Will-O-Wisp. So here, I'm just decided I'm going to set up some Toxic Spikes. He has nothing on his team that has a, that can defog other than Mew. So yeah, I want to set these Toxic Spikes up, as I want to get this... Uh, I want to get... I want to make sure that his switch-ins are punished. Everything he has is on the ground, so minus the wheezing. The wheezing is the only thing that isn't on the ground. So I want to punish this thing for not for not being for not being on the ground. So uh, I want to punish his ground mons that he brought. So uh, here I just I think I decide to go for a second layer. I think I, yeah I think I decide to go for a second layer as he decides to switch into Kamala here. Uh, now this. I'm like, okay, he might want to try and rapid spin this away, as I know he gets a free switch in on this because of comatose, he can't be anything else. So here, I just decide I'm going to go for the... If he goes for rapid spin, he goes for rapid spin. I'm going to go for the sludge wave, and I'm going to do some damage to it. Uh, here, 
I want to see if also, also if it's assault vested. If it's assault vested, it will not do 50%, but that actually does way more than 50. Shows me he is not assault vested. So this is good for me. I take the return, and actually that does very little. Uh, later, I come to find out he actually wasn't full happiness. So that that return did a lot less than it should have because he was not full happiness. So here I just decide I'm going to go for the earth power. If he switches in something else, I want this Kamala gone as this is his only rapid spinner, other than the Mew. And if this thing is gone, I don't I don't think I ha I don't have to worry about it. So. Um, here he brings back out Detroit, and I'm not too overly worried about this now because he didn't rapid spin the the stuff away. So I just thought I might make a switch into Narissa. Uh, I might be able to get a heal bell off. I might be able to get a yawn, something like that. I can, you know, I can do something. I can try to do something here. So as you know, I, as he goes for the flamethrower, I just, I just take no damage from it. So. Uh, here he goes for taunt, which was a good idea. It was great on his part because I believe I went for uh, yawn. No, no, I went for scald. I, I just wanted to get some damage. I wanted to try and get a burn on it. So, uh, just showing that I can actually three hit KO this thing with my uh, Vaporeon, which was actually really nice because I forgot Vaporeon has a 110 uh, special attack set. So, he switches this thing out. He wants to bring in something else. He brings back in Joe Green. Uh, as I just go for the scold, I have no reason not to switch out. And now, Joe Green, one of the biggest counters to Narissa, is gone. I don't have to worry about it. And Narissa actually picks up, I think, her first kill. I think she picks up her first kill of the season, so, so there it is. Here she brings here he brings in the war on drugs. Here I'm a little worried because I have no idea what this thing is, and I'm like, okay, it's poison, good. And then I remembered this thing actually has poison heal. So I'm like, crap, that could actually work against me should he have poison heal. So here I go into Alex Strassa because uh, I can easily scare this thing out as he goes for the spore here. Uh, good move on his part to go for that spore. So here I want to try and scare this thing out. I also don't know what this thing could do. I didn't see any toxic damage, so now that that just confirms that he is toxic, uh, that he is toxic, what is it? That he's toxic orb and poison heal. So this ends up, you know, the toxic ends up kind of working against me here, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't get to whittle him down, but I can handle it. So he does reveal fling, which was kind of a weird one. I don't know why you would fling if, uh, if I'm toxic, but I mean, because if I wake up and I use Psy Shock, he, the thing dies instantly. So here he switches out. Good move on his part. As he goes into Mew, as I'm just going to reveal the heal bell. I'm going to get my. I'm going to wake up Alex Strassa. I'm also going to poison this Mew upon entry. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too horribly much about it. I still don't know what kind of Mew this is. And so with that, uh, I decide I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to be aggressive and I'm going to. I'm going to bring in. I think. I think here is where I bring in. Uh, Guzrilla. I think I bring Guzrilla in expecting a psychic. So, so yeah, I make the switch. I go into Guzrilla. If he goes for the psychic, then I'm going to survive and I'm going to be able to get a free thing off. So I still don't know what kind of stuff. Plus, I can get the sand up, and even if I die, uh, I can do that. But he actually gets the stealth rocks up. Uh, so this shows me that he's a, a little bit of a more def uh, defensive set, or at least I think he is. So with poison and with uh, yeah, after seeing leftovers, I definitely believe he's a poison set. So I think I can. I'm, at this point, I'm like, crap! I can probably outspeed this thing. I should be able to outspeed it, and I should be able to hit it with a with a with a with a pursuit. But no, he actually is still faster than me. So he has a little bit of speed investments to still outspeed me at 124, so or 128 or whatever the hell my speed is at full max. So um, as it is, we lose Guzrilla, but we still have three more turns of sand. Uh, this thing gets buffeted by sand, plus it has to take poison damage, on top of it has to take, um, on top of that it has to take, uh, uh, some other stuff. So here, I just decide I'm going in for War Greymon, I'm Scarfed, I'm Sand Forced, nothing actually does, nothing takes an Iron Head that well, so I just decide I'm gonna go for the Iron Head, why the hell not, I have no reasons not to. So he withdraws the Mew as he goes into Detroit here. Uh, which is his wheezing, uh, which is his full physical mom, but I'm just gonna go for the iron head and This iron head does the two hit KO from this range. So he does not Take this De Detroit does not take this well. So here. I'm just like, you know what it works. Let's keep going Let's do another iron head. I'm scarfed. I'm scarfed sand force. Let's go So uh, here now here's where things start getting really weird He brings in disaster 
Now this is Cobalt and I'm a little, I'm like, okay, I can take it, but it's air balloon. I'm like, crap, I gotta pop this air balloon first. I gotta get it. I already have, I'm, I'm up five to three. As I get this and I'm like, okay, can I, can I get a flinch? Can I get it? No, I don't, but I pop the air balloon. I see Rose shows rock polish. Now I'm like, now I'm scared because now he's doubled the speed and I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be bad. This is, this is definitely gonna be bad. Now my sand is down and I'm gone. So he just goes for the close combat here. He decides to KO me. Uh, smart move on his part. Uh, but he's now at negative one. Here's where I, now here after after Grey One goes down, I was kind of in a I was kind of in a spot. I didn't know where to go. But what I should have done is I should have brought in Alex Straza, but I brought Whitney in because Whitney has Earthquake. Earthquake doesn't KO from this range, but I make the misplay here and go uh, as he goes for the Swords Dance, I realize I made a huge misplay because I went from Milk Drink expecting him to go for another close combat. And this, this is just, this is bad. Because I can survive a close combat. That's fine. Plus two close combat, I don't survive. So here I made a big, 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 big mistake. As he gets extra greedy and goes for the plus four. Now everything on his team. Now this thing outspeeds everything on my team. And I have nothing that takes this thing. So at this point, I'm pretty much got a bank on a crit. I don't get the crit. If I had gone for two earthquakes uh, at the plus two, I could have actually survived a plus two iron head on Latios, but it is what it is. I should have just gone into Latios because as it is here, he just pretty much sweeps up the rest of my team as we, I miss, I misplayed as I hugely misplayed and it cost me. It definitely costed me this match uh, as I could have at plus two. I could have survived an iron head. I could have survived. It was plus four that I don't survive. I don't survive a plus four iron head. Plus he hadn't shown it yet, but I had assumed that he had it. So uh, here he's just pretty much gonna sweep up my team with uh, with this thing because I have nothing that takes this. I mean Iron Head. If he goes for Iron Head, yeah, cool. But he's got close combat. I think I go for Protect here just to stall out one of his close combats because he's used I think three or f I think this is his fourth one that he uses. So this one I'm like, can I stall him out of these close combats and get him to go for the Iron Head? Like that would be really good, but I mean, I so I go for a double protect, trying to get a double protect. I don't land it. If I had hit the double and triple protect, that would have been just amazing. But close combat is just gonna kill Narissa. Uh, it was a crit. It didn't even matter. The crit didn't even matter there. He was killing me anyways. But um, so my one misplay on not going for the earthquake and going for the milk drink cost me because, like I said, things change if I go for the earthquake. If I go for the earthquake. I, I weaken this thing enough to where he has to go for a close combat to kill me. If he doesn't go for a close combat, then, uh, if he doesn't go for a close combat, then, uh, if he doesn't go for a close combat on the first one and he goes for the second sword stance, then I kill, I kill him with mill tank. And then I still have, uh, I still have Mew and Breloom to have to worry about. But I have answers to Breloom in Latios and Mew also is rocking Shadow, I'm sorry, Latios takes both with Shadow Ball and Psyshock, so I don't have to worry too much about that. And Latios is guaranteed out of speed because uh, Mew is a more defensive set. So uh, as I think I could, I think it might've been a two hit KO on that Breloom, but it might've been a one hit as I, I was life warped. So it would've been up in the air, but um, but as it is, we, we end up losing 3-0 because I let, I let, that Cobalion set up. So uh, it is what it is. There's nothing I could do about it. I mean, I had good momentum in the match. I played right. I made the safe plays. Uh, he got greedy and it paid. It paid off for him. I played safe and he played. He he went with the greed and he got it. So as it is, I gave that to him. So uh, we're now two and two, but we still have good differential as we uh, this is a 3 0 loss, but we still have good differential. We're two, two at plus five. So uh, I still believe the team is very, very good. I still believe I would have won this match had I not let him set up as far as he did. Like as soon as I saw rock polish, I should have just gone for it. Like I was going for the iron head. I was scarfed in iron head anyway. So I was going to try to iron head him down. And if I had gotten one more iron head off, I would have actually, um, had I gotten one more iron head off, had he gotten greedy and tried to get to plus six, I could have iron head or flinched him into a point where I could have actually killed him. But there's nothing I could do. Nothing I could do. Actually, no, if that had happened, I would have had a bit bank on flinches. But, uh, if he, if I had gone into Latios originally, I could have forced him to either switch or I could have forced him. Uh, I, I could have forced him to switch with the Psy Shock. I should have gone with the Psy Shock as it's the safe play. It kills both of those mons. Uh, Psy Shock doesn't fully kill it, but it's a two hit KO. But even if he goes for a plus two, 
because uh, he didn't go for, a, I don't think he, I think he's only a plus two at this point. At plus two, he doesn't kill Latios with, a, with an iron head. He can't kill Latios with an iron head. I could get it ranged within range, kill it, either kill it or severely weaken it, then bring in Nami. Nami resists both, takes the plus two iron head, hits him with a uh, shadow ball, kills him with shadow ball, then he can bring in Breloom, Breloom mops up Nami, I then bring in Latias, or I can bring in something else. I could bring, I could have brought in, uh, oh god, what did I have at that point? I could have brought in uh, Miltank, as Miltank would have, I don't know, it would have been stalled out with Miltank. Like, maybe, I don't know if I could have, I don't know, now thinking about it that way, I don't think I could have, not without Latias. But anyways, uh, Little Bigness gets the win, and grass Little Bigness, uh, I... I let you set up and that was my own fault that that just hits me there so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like comment subscribe uh we as of week four we are taking a week break as to get get matches uh what is it makeup matches done so makeup matches need to be done for those who have not completed certain weeks so there will be no week five this next week until I think the week after that um whenever this video goes live I like I said I think we're in the middle of when I'm recording this we're in the middle of the break week so um like I said, Cress's battle took me a while, and actually I had Cress's battle the day before I had this one. So, uh, so I was riding high off that 5-0 and getting into it, uh, getting into that. So, and then uh, the day after this, I had the ICBA. I had, I had, I think it was no, 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 it was later that day after this battle, I had the ICB. I had my ICBA battle with Dark Devil or Brendan, uh, the Marlboro Mudsdale coaches. So, so it was, it was like, it was like three battles in two days it was like really close but it was like the only thing i was waiting for i was waiting for the battles to get these videos recorded so it was just and then i had to wait for the the time because like i said my time is very limited in the summer with my son to be able to record these videos so like you know if you guys don't actually know this this is 1 30 in the morning when i'm recording this you know i stay up extremely late to record these videos for you guys so uh like i said i hope you guys enjoyed if you did like comment subscribe uh share this on share this on social medias twitter facebook's please um and i will see you guys in, in our next battle with our week five god who do we play in week five who do we play in week five i don't even remember let me see here uh week five who do we play we play the portage hurtiers okay so this is the buzzwall team okay this is the guy who's got bubble this is the guy who took over for, with buzzwald and incineroar and i've actually been looking at some of his matches so i definitely need to prepare for this otherwise that buzzwall will the buzzwall will definitely become a problem as he does have a pretty good team jolteon gudra buzzwall gengar amungus scramble crobat registeel dude he has a really good team he hasn't brought the registeel yet so he could definitely bring that registeel so all right i'll, I'll see you guys in the next video and have yourselves a great day all right bye